Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Ten years ago, it was fat. Now, public health enemy number one is sugar. This year marks the introduction of the sugar tax. We've already seen some of the naming and shaming of companies that aren't prepared to reduce sugar content. Well, this programme's been looking into whether companies are adhering to the new rules of online sugar advertising that emerged some six months ago. And our inquiries have been changing corporate policy. As James Clayton reports. <laughs> About 50% of all of the sugar consumed in the UK comes from this, British sugar beets. And for factories like this one behind me, well, business is booming. But the government is trying to make us eat less sugar. In April this year, the sugar tax will come into force. Public Health England will name the companies that have and haven't reduced their sugar and fat content in March. And strict new rules around advertising to children came in last year. But the reaction by companies to these measures has been, well, varied. Hurry, hurry! It's the crazy croco. Back in the day, advertising rules were a lot more relaxed. They're gonna taste right. Ten years ago, a review found that 80% of all food advertising expenditure in children's airtime on terrestrial channels were for foods high in salt, sugar or fat. Everybody knows Frosties taste great! Now, only at Burger King, with every kid's club meal. In 2008, rules were brought in to stop these kinds of adverts being shown on children's TV. Rules that were extended to cover online advertising and material six months ago. What does that mean? Well, here's the chief executive of the Advertising Standards Authority. So just to be clear, if you're advertising to children and you're uh, advertising for sweets or junk food, you shouldn't be allowed to advertise uh, to those children. Is that that's right? right, that's right. And children are defined as anyone who's under 16. So it's, it's children and actually it's young people as well. But Newsnight has been given examples of online material that campaigners believe push those rules to the limits. The Kinder brand makes chocolate products aimed at children, and their website, Magic Kinder, has a series of games also aimed at children. Some have referred to these kinds of games as adver games and question whether they should be allowed at all. So what we've got here is uh, the Magic Kinder website. Um, so magic is the dominant word, but kinder is there as well. And you can see their games targeting three plus, five plus. Uh, now, you can't see very strong kinder advertising, but once you start getting into the games and into the stories, you can see very close association with the toys that children receive when they get kinder eggs. I think they're not upholding the spirit of the rules. It seems to me that many of them are playing around in the grey areas of what is targeting adults or children. Adver games are caught by exactly the same ban on advertising to children when it comes to products that are high in fat, salt and sugar as any other form of advertising is. So you should not be, if you're a company uh, with a, a brand that is high in fat, salt or sugar, you should not be producing an adver game for that brand that targets children, that appeals to children. The big question here then is, does this constitute an advert game at all? Or are they simply fun video games for kids? In a statement to Newsnight, Kinder said, The game section of the Magic Kinder website has been designed to provide a positive play and learning experience between parents and children. As with the rest of the Magic Kinder website, there are no products visible or mentioned. No products are visible, but the toys in them are. Since Newsnight told Kinder we were doing this story, the company has said it will now place an age restriction on the games. The Advertising Standards Authority is looking into the websites. There are other areas too that are difficult to police. Take the Chewitt's Facebook page. You have to be over 13 to have a Facebook account. And here, Chewitt's aren't paying for advertising. They're just updating their homepage. But what about posts like this one? 
Happy National Colouring Book Day. If you'll be colouring in today, give us a like. The important thing here is to make sure that if you're an advertiser and you are using um, Facebook as a communication channel to get through to people, is to make sure that you're not targeting under 16 year olds with your, with your advertising for, for your products that are high in fat, salt or sugar. And of course also to make sure that you're complying with the, the tougher content rules um, for ads that even assuming you're not doing that. Chewitt's told Newsnight that the vast majority of people interacting with the Chewitt's page are over 16. There's not much doubt that advertising to children works. A YouGov poll commissioned by Cancer Research and given to Newsnight found that 11 to 19 year olds with high ad exposure were almost three times more likely to have diets high in salt, sugar and fat. And where did the survey find that those young people watched those ads? Well, on daytime TV, on sports channels, reality TV, and most commonly on entertainment shows. So if you look at um, viewing figures of, of the programmes most popular with children, it is that, that Saturday night family viewing slot. Those advertising breaks are absolutely crammed full of um, junk food adverts. So we found um, in a study where we looked at adverts around The Voice and Hollyoaks and The Simpsons um, that of the, the food and drink adverts, 60% of them were for junk food. So what we'd like to see is a 9pm watershed on junk food marketing. But for some, this is a step too far. You know, a lot of these foods appeal to adults and these companies have a right to advertise their food to adults. These programmes, these Saturday night programmes are watched by massive adult audiences and I think it's perfectly fair that they should be allowed to advertise to them. You had plenty of money. It's not just family shows that are in the crosshairs of sugar campaigners. The rules on advertising to children on TV haven't changed for 10 years, and some believe those rules should be tightened. Cocoa Pops is not allowed to be advertised on children's TV, but Cocoa Pops Granola, a less sugary variant of Cocoa Pops, can be. Pops granola. This kind of falls into a grey area, because on one hand, Kellogg's have created a product and reformulated a product to reduce the amount of sugar so that it is okay to be advertised on kids' TV. And we want to encourage big corporations like Kellogg's to reformulate their products. On the other hand, it allows them to get the Cocoa Pops brand in front of children and on children's TV. And Cocoa Pops are one of the unhealthiest breakfast cereals on the market. Hey, want to try my new Cocoa Pops porridge? But how do we heat up the milk? Kellogg's is changing its cereals though. Cocoa Pops will see a 40% reduction in sugar this year, and the company says it's completely appropriate for Cocoa Pops Granola to advertise in kids' airtime. Half the sugar us kids eat and drink each year comes from snacks and sugary drinks. Public Health England will publish its updated nutrient profile later this year, and they're expected to tighten rules on sugar. That would mean products like Cocoa Pops Granola in its current formula may not be able to advertise in kids' media in the future. You'll be hearing a lot more about sugar this year, and it's not just in advertising. Unsurprisingly, industry doesn't like the sugar tax or stricter advertising rules. The Food and Drink Federation prefers a voluntary sugar reduction target. It sounds like a, 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 lot, a lot of where you guys are is actually you quite like the status quo, you don't want anything to change, is that fair? I, I would love the status quo, but that's not what we've got. What we've got is a world of constant change. I mean, we've had endless new initiatives on public health so over the last few years. So you want nothing to change in terms no, of No, no, what, what, what I want is a little bit of stability to complete the work that we're currently on. So, so it's just trust we, us, we, we'll do it. Well, the government set us a challenge. It's given us a deadline. It said if we don't hit that, it will consider doing more. That's a perfectly reasonable position for government to take. So let's see where we get to in 2020 before we start doing other new things. But the lesson from advertising is clear. Companies are reluctant to change until they're told to do so. Unless the food and drink industry shows progress on reducing sugar, the government may well look to get even tougher. James Clayton with that report. I've been